love this piece, Mother and Child. It speaks of compassion, nurture, tenderness, and care. And it's one of the pieces on display at the National Gallery of Jamaica for their exhibition, Kingston, the City and Art. That's our focus in this week's Arts Page. Kingston, one of the most vibrant cities globally, Jamaica's capital, the birthplace of reggae, a melting pot of people, culture, and lifestyles. It's no wonder the National Gallery, a division of the Institute of Jamaica, decided to focus on this city for their current exhibition. The Kingston exhibition now uh, really came about as a reflection on our part on the recent designation of uh, Kingston as a creative city. And Kingston received this designation because of its role in the development of music. Uh, but Kingston also has been the hub uh, for many other aspects of Jamaican culture, including the development of the visual arts. So it really is a response to that. The artwork and pieces selected from various artists display the beat and heart of Kingston, the city. Assistant Curator at the Gallery, Monique Barnett-Davidson, explains the selection process. So there are over 80 pieces of artworks in the Kingston Part 1 exhibition. The works were primarily taken from the National Collection, of which the National Gallery is a custodian. But we were also very fortunate to get independent lenders to also lend a few works to us as well. The works were selected based on the research that was conducted about Kingston. So we were particularly keen on looking at ways in our parallels between the social history of the city and the development of visual arts. The exhibition is divided into five themes, nature's bounty, crossroads, institutions and collections, art on the streets, and stories to tell. Guided by Monique, let's look at these areas. Nature's Bounty is a section that looks at natural resources in Kingston and how artists have been able to exploit those resources to create artwork. So we look at four materials in, in, in general. We look at wood, we look at clay, we look at tortoise shell, or specifically turtle shell, and we also look at gypsum. The theme Crossroads looks at how artists have been able to participate in the social economy of the city. We had a number of artists from as early as the 1800s who came to King, migrated to Kingston, started businesses in Kingston, had their studios in Kingston, participated in some of the commercial trade that happened in the city. One piece that definitely talks about that is Starboy. This was done by Kay Sullivan in 1972. Starboy is a bronze sculpture and it essentially depicts a young man selling star, but one of the in-star, the star newspaper that is. One of the interesting things about Starboy for a lot of visitors is his posture. Even though you can see that he may be poor, he's barefooted, he's wearing shorts, he's, he looks very, very casual. But despite all of that, the ex body language is very, very expressive, he's very relaxed. Um, some people would like to refer to him as poor and bossy. Art in the streets is the theme that looks at examples of artwork outside of a museum or a gallery setting. So we focus on public monuments, we focus on street art, you see some images of that over there. One of the most, one of the biggest controversies in art in Jamaica in fact has to do with a public monument and it is the monument of Bob Marley that is currently situated in front of the National Stadium. Now the monument itself was developed in 1985 but it was preceded by another monument of Bob Marley that was done in 1983. And this in fact was the first one that was commissioned by the government at the time. When the, according to, to history, when the statue was unveiled in public, there were many people who felt that this was not a depiction of Bob Marley at all. It didn't look like him. Um, why is he attached to a tree? Uh, all sorts of questions. And in fact, um, it is said that the family too had some concerns about the statue. So it was immediately covered and removed from the public eye and Alvin Marriott was asked to essentially remake another version of the statue that was more realistic and was more in keeping with the public's opinion 
about Bob Marley, but it remains today one of the biggest controversies in Jamaican art. Institutions and Collections is a section of the exhibition that looks at the infrastructure that supports the visual arts, how it is that artists were able to survive if they weren't doing other things, um, what were some of the more public ways in which artists were supported via education, training, as well as promotion and sale. Stories to Tell focuses on historic narratives that concern Kingston. One such story is the devastating 1907 earthquake that hit Kingston. Photographic evidence tells the tale of that tragedy. So far, I really like the shots of the ruins after the, the, um, the earthquake. It's very, very cool. As a photographer myself, I kind of have an appreciation for photographies. I've seen a lot of the um, work so far. Um, I really have enjoyed the exhibition. Um, there's a large variety of works and different types of work, different media. Um, and it's, I guess it's good to see something that's so culturally relevant. As part of the exhibition, there is also the screening of the film The Harder They Come, directed by Perry Hensel and written by Trevor Rowan in 1972. The film, which was set for the most part in Kingston, gives insight into inner city life and the struggles to achieve stardom. The National Gallery is open to the public from Mondays to Saturdays, uh, opening at 10 o'clock on each of those days, uh, closing at 4.30 on Tuesdays to Thursdays, at 4 on Fridays and at 3 on Saturdays. We're also open every last Sunday of the, of the month. Uh, it's called our last Sunday's uh, program. And on those days, we offer free admission from 11 to 4. If you're interested in seeing this wonderful exhibition, then visit the National Gallery of Jamaica right here at 12 Ocean Boulevard, downtown Kingston, or simply give them a call. I can promise you, it will be worth it.